And as we've talked about previously, uh, diagnosis and screening of osteoporosis, the DEXA scan, uh, the dual X-ray absorptiometry is the gold standard. So they compare to someone age 30. So if there are two and a half standard deviations below an, a 30 year old, um, they are considered to have osteoporosis and then osteopenia. So they're below, so they're a standard deviation below what they should be for normal. Now, if you go to something like a health fair and we didn't have anything at this health fair last week, sometimes they'll do a quick screening of an ultrasound of the foot. So, um, and that may indicate that someone may need to be referred for a, a DEXA scan. They can look at biomarkers of bone turnover, calcium, and osteoporosis. Once again, there are much better drugs to help people build bone mass. So hormones, estrogen, um, and then the particular drugs for osteoporosis, Fosamax and Beneva, they also have you know, side effects, but giving people way more options than what they had previously. Exercise testing. You know, you want to test their extremity strength, you know, their leg power. And yes, I was somewhat surprised they recommended the Wingate test for that. Balance testing, yes, very important. We want to avoid falls. Gait analysis, especially in a therapy clinic where they have an ability to do that. Older adults, ADL training and posture assessments, which we're going to do in, in class. So not a lot of data. You'd be surprised. You would think there would be so much more, uh, you know, data on exercise training in osteoporosis, but, you know, people are not really collecting data. People need, and this is counterintuitive to what you might think, weight-bearing exercise. They actually need the impact to build bone. So jogging, volleyball, activities where they're going to be jumping. So you need to be able to put stress on the bone. So the pool is not the default option here. The pool is for only when someone has pain and they're not able to do other exercise. Resistance training, you want to do greater than 70% of one RM, even up to 80% of one RM. So we're looking at, you know, six to 10 reps so, you know, 8 to 10 reps, 80% to 1RM. So, you know, as you know, it's never too late. So it's important for older adults. And target muscles involved with lateral movement. So your, you know, your abductors and adductors. Balance training, that sort of goes without saying. Focus on um, ADL. Avoid uh, excessive trunk flexion. So, you know, crunches, like full crunches where people are coming up. And also watch spinal rotation, excessive spinal rotation. The female athlete triad. So this is the um, combination of osteoporosis, amenorrhea, so lack of menstrual cycle at least three months, and low energy availability. They may or may not have an eating disorder, but they may have disordered eating. Um, you know, they may not have optimal eating. And it's very important for coaches to be able to recognize the symptoms of this. And if women are, are on any type of hormonal birth control where they're not getting their menstrual period, they really need to probably be screened and sent for a DEXA scan from a presentation I saw at the Southeast ACSM. Uh, Barbara Drinkwater was an early researcher in this. You know, she really led the way to characterize the female athlete triad. There are current position stands, and I've got the links under the links section of um, Blackboard. In fact, there's even a, you know, a, a clearinghouse called femaleathletetriad.org. But this is basically what they do. So if you look at this sliding scale, so if you look at the far right of the scale, you got optimal energy availability. So that's food calorie intake. Optimal menstrual cycles, eumenorrhea, normal menstrual cycles, and optimal bone health. And so you can see that someone really starts to slide down that scale until they have the full-blown female athlete triad. There are still some ignorant coaches out there that think if women lose their menstrual cycle that that's a good goal, but that is actually not true. So if a woman is getting pain, if they are getting stress fractures, they really need to be referred. So those of you who are going to work in coaching situations, that's something that's really important to know. 
So, you know, know the different types of arthritis, um, rheumatoid um, versus osteoarthritis, lower back pain, um, exercise programming, mechanisms of osteoporosis, including the female athlete triad. What are some of the uh, components of that? And then here is the sample question.